Thank you, Steph. Well, a monumental moment in Canadian history. Health Canada approving its first COVID-19 vaccine from Pfizer and BioNTech. So let's break down some of the information that you should know here. 30,000 units of this vaccine could be shipped starting tomorrow, with vaccinations beginning as early as next week. Federal health officials say they expect to have enough doses to vaccinate all Canadians by the end of September. Now, officials are hitting the ground running with the first shipment expected to touch down on Canadian soil by Monday. At last, we have a reason to feel optimistic and excited about returning to the lives we led pre-COVID. Health officials expect nearly 249,000 doses by the end of December and about 10% of the population vaccinated by the end of March. There are conditions attached to the approval. Pfizer must continue delivering information to Health Canada about any adverse reactions like the ones we told you about yesterday, allergic reactions reported in the UK. But overall, researchers say it is still a critical milestone in the fight against COVID. But this is a momentous occasion. I mean, the geek in me is amazed that we, no one would have thought, I think, you know, even when we looked back um, at the first discovery of the, of the virus that um, less than a year later we'd be authorizing and then distributing a vaccine. Here in Ontario, the province expects about 40% of the vaccines with a small number arriving on Monday. Premier Ford taking to Twitter saying this is phenomenal news for all Canadians as we take the next step toward ending this pandemic. As soon as vaccines arrive on Ontario soil, will we be ready to deliver and administer them? Adding, friends, the light at the end of the tunnel grows brighter. Now, with the vaccine expected to arrive in Ontario first thing next week, it may play a factor when the provincial government announces new COVID projections today. We are also expected to learn if lockdowns in Toronto and Peel region, which began just over two weeks ago, are working. The last round of projections showed that we could reach 2,000 new daily cases by early December. That's a number that we have come very close to this week, with over 1,900 cases reported Sunday and Monday. Let's get to York Region now. Markham's mayor is asking the province to consider new restrictions for big box stores before moving York Region into a full lockdown. Frank Scarpitti saying despite a high infection rate, data points to very little spread inside small businesses and restaurants. He says close contact between people from different households, that's a big spreader. And for that reason, a lockdown wouldn't have the desired effect. Scarpetti suggesting moving major retailers and malls to curbside pickup and limiting the number of people inside grocery stores. This week, the region's three hospitals warned that they have reached a tipping point, citing a significant increase in COVID patients. Well, have a look at this. Several decommissioned TTC buses retrofitted as mobile COVID-19 testing sites. They are hitting the road with the first two rolling out today in Rexdale. They're going to be servicing areas of the city not close to testing sites. Each one can test up to 100 people daily. And this will be one of the things that we talked to Mayor John Tory about. He's going to be joining me just after 7 o'clock. We'll talk about the ongoing efforts when it comes to the fight against COVID-19. Let's get to education now as East York Elementary School and East York Elementary School, I should say, where a testing blitz uncovered 31 cases of COVID will not be reopening today as planned. We're talking about Thorncliffe Park Public School. It's going to remain shut down until at least December 14th. The closure was extended by Toronto Public Health so that it can continue to investigate. The school was the first to administer asymptomatic testing. It's one of three TDSB schools in the Thorncliffe neighborhood to declare an outbreak and to close. The other two, Fraser Mustard Early Learning Academy and Mark Garneau Collegiate Institute. Mark Garneau will be closed until the new year. No word yet on when Fraser Mustard may reopen. Meanwhile, the Ontario Secondary School Teachers Federation sending a letter to the Ford government and Toronto Public Health calling for extended asymptomatic COVID testing. The OSSTF also wants schools to remain closed for the first two weeks of January and all schools in Toronto to move to online learning beginning on January the 4th for those first two weeks. It says the extended break would allow for voluntary asymptomatic testing to be set up. Coming up here at 6.30, we're going to be speaking with the Toronto District School Board Chair Alexander Brown for his thoughts on what next steps may look like. So we've got a busy news day here. We're going to take a quick break here. Coming up, 
Mike Apple talking about this food delivery service DoorDash making quite a splash as it goes public. We'll talk about the numbers next.